How's it going everybody? Jesse here with Redefine Effects and I am running the Unreal Engine 5.3 preview with the updated Niagara Fluids. I'm recording this video in 4K on a 4090 RTX, so feel free to make the video full screen so you can see what kind of details I'm getting. If you'd like to learn how to make this portal from scratch, I recently made 12 new Niagara Fluids tutorials. The link to that is in the description. And since I know I'll be asked this question, and I already have been, to compare it with something like Embergen or Houdini, really the main advantage is that the simulations run directly inside of Unreal Engine, and you can make changes right here. You don't have to import and shade any VDBs. So I can easily just open up my Niagara system. Now what I recommend is that you pause the simulation here before you make any changes. And I can go to emitter summary, and right now I have the resolution set to 500. I can set this resolution even higher, so let's say 700. But it's going to start lagging a bit and it's no longer real time, right? So this is what the caching feature is for that they introduced. You are now able to pre-cache these simulations into your sequencer so that you can pre-simulate them at a much higher resolution and then just play them back from cache in your cinematics, short films, or anything like that. Or I can set it lower to, let's say, 300, and then it's gonna be just much quicker to deal with, and it's definitely um, real time right now. So they've provided us with this emitter summary, which houses all of the main settings that you will need to change the look of your simulations. So for example, you can give it some more um, buoyancy for the smoke and the smoke will now be heavier and falling down to the ground more. You can also go under render and easily change the colors of both the fire and the smoke. So I can just change the smoke color to let's say bright red and it just easily updates right away. You can also affect the simulations with some forces here. So I have wind, I can crank up the wind strength and the smoke is being pushed back. Right, so it's very fun, it's instant feedback, and it's living directly inside of Unreal. Another effect I made is this Fire Force field. I originally made this with Embergen as well. So just want to show you what that looks like in 4K. I would say some pretty beautiful detail considering it's real time and you get all of the lighting in the scene, all of these high-res quixel assets and everything along with the fire. You can see I also have some additional sort of spark particles flying off of the force field. Someone asked me if I'm going to be teaching regular Niagara and not just Niagara fluids. The important thing to understand is that it all lives within the same Niagara system, right? So if you're familiar with Niagara, you will still just be creating your particles and then you simply add the grid 3D gas emitter and you can simply tell Niagara to use your particles as a source for the fire and smoke. So it all works together, it's all interconnected. Niagara fluids is not really different from regular Niagara, right? It all lives together within the same Niagara system for you. So I just wanted to show you this. Now let's look at some other examples. The next thing I wanna show you are the presets that come with Niagara 5.3. So you can right click, make a new Niagara system, create from template, and here you have the templates or presets that you can use. So we have some basic shockwave. Let's see what that looks like. You can just drag it into your scene and it should be working right away, right? So I can just activate it over and over again and get a pretty nice shockwave. Again, let's right click, make a new Niagara system. I wanna show you some of these templates. So next one, maybe this grid 3D gas particle source. And this is what that looks like, right? So we're actually using particles here to act as a source for the fuel and smoke emission. You have this set fluid source attributes module. And here you can control, for example, the velocity scale, which is how much velocity the smoke and fire are given from the particles. So if I set this to two, it's contributing more velocity to the simulation. You get something uh, crazier. I can also control how much smoke I'm getting with density here. So I can set it to one, get way more smoke or instead set it to zero and I'll get just the fire on its own. And then you can maybe just lower the temperature to 0.2 and you have the basis for something like a flamethrower. You can control how long the fire stays alive with this dissipation rate for the temperature. So I can just set that to 0.5 
and now the fire will actually stay alive much longer. Right, so I would say it's very user friendly now. There's not as many settings as it seems, really just a few key settings to change how the simulation behaves. You get to use your particles as a source. So everything that you know how to do with Niagara, as far as any kind of particle effects, trails, bursts, explosions, you can do that now. The next new feature is the colored smoke. So I can show you that preset too. So that's what that looks like. Um, the colored particles are actually transferring the color onto the smoke and they're changing color over time you get some beautiful color mixing inside of the smoke and i also want to show you the water emitters so niagara system templates and here you have the 3d liquid templates so let's grab maybe the grid 3d flip hose and here is your real-time liquid simulation with some basic splash and foam you are actually allowed to control how big these splash and foam particles are and how long they stay alive for. So if I just do control E, you actually get some comments inside of the templates for how it works. But basically, if you go under emitter summary again, here you can control the aging rate of the foam and the spray. You can control their opacity and their size over life. Create one of the other templates here, maybe the flip pool. So this is just a grid filled with water, but what you can do is grab a sphere shape and just type in tag and type collider and now you can have your objects actually collide with the liquid and create splash and foam pretty cool so i just wanted to give you a quick introduction and show you the detail if you'd like to learn how to set up these simulations from scratch and what all of these settings do Again, I have made a completely free Niagara crash course. The link to that is in the description if you'd like to check that out. I will also be posting a bunch of tutorials on my main channel. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.